Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. We are looking at a classic today, Ed. Jaime Hernandez's Woe Nelly wrestling comic. The best wrestling comic I've ever read, I've ever seen. Um, absolutely love it. But before we dive into this masterpiece, tell us about your new comic. You can't disable the power of my label. Fantagraphics is the publisher of Woe Nelly, and Fantagraphics is the publisher of Red Room Comics. Fresh on the stands as of this recording. Came out yesterday in comic shops. Uh, raging success. The most popular comic that, that uh, Fantagraphics has ever published to date. But comic shops are our customer, and uh, we need you guys to support comic shops. So scoop up the, this comic if you see it. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in the universe of Red Room. <laughs> Little Billy Kincaid shout out there. And uh, every story, every issue, completely self-contained. This first issue is triple the size of your average monthly comic, but it is not triple the price, man. We just had to tack on an extra uh, $2 or something to make up for all of that uh, that page count. But it's a complete story, and every issue is completely self-contained. So we, we are sending issue two off to the printer. Today, the machine has begun, Jimmy. Every four weeks, there's going to be a fresh Red Room comic. And uh, this is the cover to issue number three. If you don't have a good shop where you could get these put on your pull list, then by all means, pre-order the comic directly from the Fantagraphics website. We have a link, I have a link in the description below this video that can take you there so that you can put in those orders. Thank you guys very much for making this comic a hit. We looked recently, Ed, at Love and Rockets cover to cover, very fun video. Somehow we missed the back cover of issue 23, which is this pro wrestling magazine style Jaime Hernandez cover. Absolutely beautiful. I love this cover. It's one of my favorites. And uh, I'm going to plug my Patreon. You can join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can download my wrestling zine, along with a lot of my other mini comics and uh, out of print zines, things that are hard to find, small editions. You can download them on my Patreon. But I call attention to this because after I was uh, coming up with something for Tom Scioli's GoBots cover, I got to thinking about the wrestling cover and thinking like that would be perfect. It would give me a chance to draw several of the GoBots and different uh, kind of different uh, poses and actions and close-ups and things like that. And uh, his illustration of a pro wrestling cover is what really put that idea in my head. So you can download this and a whole lot more at my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Jim, I'm so glad you chose this comic for us to dust off because I, I haven't read it since it came out. And I'm so thankful that I did. Yeah, that uh, makes me wonder. 1996, so I didn't read it until a couple years after that. You know, I, I kind of found this probably in the early 2000s or so and just loved it. And like you, I hadn't read it in quite a, quite a while until this week when I pulled it out to reread. And I held it in high esteem before. I hold it in higher esteem now. It's so cool because in addition to the comic that we'll be going through, there's all this like ephemera, all this wrestling culture kind of stuff where you would see these sort of pinups or photographs, um, you know, in real life would be the counterpart of this where wrestlers would have those photographs and then they would sell them at their gimmick table, you know, before and after matches, get them to autograph it. And Jaime captures all that, you know, so well, man, like, you know, he, there's like the wrestlers to get over sometimes, man, they would have the regional component, you know, and you got to get to be a part of the zeitgeist. So when, you know, Foxy Brown and black exploitation is out, I bet dynamite Pam Jones with that little, uh, peace sign in her, in her name. Yeah, I love it. I love that part. <laughs> like I bet, I bet she did really well in certain territories. We should also mention Fanographics is putting out an upcoming book of Jaime Hernandez wrestling comics and art. Uh, I can't wait to see that thing, but I assume that it'll be building on some of these kind of things where it's like, I just imagine Jaime having like a whole cast of these kind of wrestling pinups and drawings and character ideas. He, he's he's so fluent in wrestling, and it, you kind of need my body language in a way to to be able to explain this part right. But when we did the the Jaime shoot interview, uh, when the cameras, I mean, it's, it's not like we just do the shoot interview and then say, "All right, get the fuck out." Like we're hanging out for hours, and we were talking wrestling. Uh, I don't think it's on a shoot interview, but the way that he described like wrestling growing up, man, uh, was like, you know, when people who were like outsiders who really weren't real wrestling fans would like come up to me, they would ask, they would say like, you know, is wrestling real or fake? Like, like, how does it work? And he just uh, did that little like 
turn a key and a lock thing on his lip and, and cross his arms and b-boy style and just sat there and nonchalantly <laughs> pretended like body language like i don't know uh i love that that was it was so awesome because it's like of course we're all part of this we're all part of this conspiracy right you know especially at that time and i was trying to think like when did that the um that network tv like beyond behind wrestling with the mask wrestler and stuff when did that come out in conjunction with this and i honestly think that it came out after this i'm not 100 percent sure so like there's language in here like heels and and baby baby face and stuff that this might be the first time i ever read those like like the, the first time it was ever like revealed to me and i think i just dashed it off like right heel fa- like what I, I don't i don't get that it's one of the fascinating things with this story because he is breaking kayfabe at times. And uh, yeah, 96 would have been pretty early to see that anywhere. I, you know, like it's such a weird audience piece because these are characters from Love and Rockets. Love and Rockets Volume 1 had ended at this point, And this is, I think, his follow up after, very next after thing, it yeah. ends. Um, I've, I've been lingering on this page because we've got like the local announcer guy. And his catchphrase is, whoa, Nelly. Yeah, the Gordon Soli of <laughs> exactly. uh, Jaime World. So awesome. And again, I, this is exactly like those that pinup from the inside front cover that this series is going to have quite a few of those kind of moments. But I love these compositions of like, just show us all these characters, female wrestling greats from the past. He's so fucking fluent in wrestling and he's so good at it that you have like your Pittsburgh like ethnic names and shit like yes. that. Itsy and Bitsy. And, and they would have these kind of, he's just, he's so hip to it, man. And it's not insulting. Uh, there's such a love for it. And... You know, like one of the things that Jaime does, that that the that Los Bros do, uh, is just create great three dimensional characters, mm-hmm. and that's what this is. It's not a plot driven comic. It's a character piece, and Jaime can create a great character uh, with the best of them. Yeah, and despite starting with the character, there are these great ups and downs, and and. Uh you know, kind of on the edge of your seat moments. Like, I need to know how this is resolved. I need to know what happens next. Even though he starts from character, we get those plot moments in here. And uh, we're going to start out. This is Gina and uh, Sochi. They are tag team partners. They are longtime friends who, as Gina, when she was a little girl, dreamed of growing up in these two being a tag team, you know, tag team champions. And we see them, you know, reading about wrestling, getting in the car, hair up, uh, you know, getting ready, basically, the dream's alive. Like, they're going to go wrestle. Even this shit right here, man, the community center. Tonight, wrestling, but then tomorrow night, we're going to have, you know, a, a community theater performance of Nutcracker, and then, you know, some mariachi stuff. But, dude, they're, they're not tag team in here, man. Right. This, so what we just saw was Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Iron Sheik in the same car. That's true. That's true. <laughs> if they'd have got stopped by the cops, man, that could have been the end of their wrestling career. Another thing that you'll notice, man, is Jaime's, Jaime's plan for the spread. So when you turn the pages, like he makes sure to, to to reveal new scenes on the on the page turn, and you will get page after page of just the greatest figure drawing in comics. It's phenomenal. Uh, and these silent wrestling scenes that communicate so much story and like uh, the you know the great cameramen of pro wrestling. You need that face to sell. He, it's it's selling. Both of them. Facials. Facials are excellent, as uh, Cornette might say. <laughs> but the, the foreshortening, the figure work is outstanding. The black and white stuff. The weight of the figures. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, when you see, like, the, the, the some of my favorite stuff and the things that I really, like, looked at so much with Jaime was, like, the, the tension of the edges of the um, spandex mm-hmm. and, like, the little skin kind of, like, Yep, like uh, sh- sh- squash and stretch of the the skin fitting into the leotards. Like these women are built perfectly for wrestling. You know, like these ain't waifs. These are tough broads, man. He's really good with the shadows too, where it's just a line, but it's it reads exactly right. Yeah, the boots too, like the laces. Oh man, the boots are phenomenal because you'll see them whenever they go into like the black negative space behind them, and it's just the laces right. that, are, that are creating the front edge. Yeah, there's that that stuff too, man. Where he's like maybe using some white media at the tips. As we go through these three issues, you're gonna uh, I'm gonna call attention to he switches around costumes. So you know if it's a light background, you might be wrestling in dark costumes. Almost attention to like where where's this located at. Um, 
more attention to the figure work is the foreshortening. Right. When you see these limbs like coming forward or hair reacting to, you know, a knee to the face, it, it's it's absurd. The, uh, the, the, like, the Ric Flair, like, Pratt Falls and stuff, when he pops right up, man, and, do, and does the thing. <laughs> Funny faces, yeah. Also, like, uh, how, how do you, how do you do the crowd, man? Black. I love that stuff. That's, if you get into, like, um, the Japanese wrestling of, say, the 70s, their photographers were phenomenal. And it had to do with lighting in the arenas, and it had to do with them having the cutting-edge camera technologies. Right. So you'll hear American wrestling photographers talk about it. And uh, and there are books on Ameri- you know, on those things on wrestling photography. But that black background is sort of like the ultimate framer. If you look at old wrestling magazines, so many of those figures, I swear it's part of their popularity. They're just perfectly composed because they have a black backdrop. Coach Vicky, man, she's the pencil. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and the eraser, yeah. the most dangerous move in wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, so here's where we start to get a little bit of the breaking kayfabe, you know, talking about what's going on behind the scenes and uh, machinations of some of these promoters and uh, who's getting pushed and, and what's going to be coming up. And then more great wrestling. And patterns. Jaime, one of the, one of the you know, so great with the patterns, whether it's the referee's black and white stripes. I think the referee black and white stripes work really, really well with this black background. Like, I mean, that's... Whoever your favorite black and white artist is, I feel like this is right up there. You could you could tell who's who's face and, and heel in the storytelling of the wrestling because like this is that egotistical move where you really have that person at your at your uh, disposal and then you know you're goading oh, the camera yeah. and taunting the audience like ah I can do whatever. He does really well with that. We're gonna see. Uh, I think it's in the third issue. But there's a there's a sequence of just working a body part, which is yeah. unbelievable storytelling. And you get a little bit of it here. It's arm, 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 you know, trying to really get that arm, t- take away that limb. This is Arn Anderson style wrestling right here. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, simple Pretty lines. Pretty cool boots. I'm pointing the boots out specifically because Jaime understands, like, the perspective that these characters are standing in. And he understands the volume of the of the cylinders, of of the limbs and you see this is like the greatest illustration of like him showing you that he knows exactly the person because the laces are above and below the vanishing point so he's he has them convex and concave yeah that's really cool you're you can find your vanishing point based on these ropes anytime you see an angle so it's like right at that level right at that ankle ed where you're pointing out man it's such little invisible things but done perfectly the bell ringing. We're going to see, you know, in addition to the wrestlers switching their gear, we'll also see different referees. You'll see the referee with like the light colored short sleeve shirt, button up shirt, you know, um, not uncommon. Watch a bunch of old wrestling footage and you'll see these different types of referee attire. No talking heads, man. These characters are acting in every panel and you know sort of how they're feeling. You see their, pur- you can see their purpose. It's, it's, it's brilliant. And uh, the story is Gina let her partner win that match and it sets up a match with uh, Aunt Vicky. And uh, Vicky has a rule about not wrestling uh, people she's related to and she's related to, to Sochi. So not, not, uh, not ideal for her and uh, not something that she wants to have that mistake repeated, which again is a little bit of the kayfabe. We see things like locker rooms. We see these characters in their home lives, which is really fun. Very superhero like. Yeah. It's almost like a secret identity. You know, somebody's changing diapers or making dinner and stuff, and then it's Saturday night. You get to go wrestle. You recognize these moves, man. Like the like the hair pull, uh, pratfall. Yes. You know, like you, we've seen that a lot. And these body, t- I, I mean, it's all fabulous Mula. Yeah. You know, these are like because like like Mula in 1996, she was probably only champion for 50 years then. And uh, it was always one of those things of, like, uh, this super old lady can't find anybody to, like, kick her ass. And then you discover what the deal was. Yeah, exactly. How about a a daylight match? Yep. So now we're wearing our dark costumes. Master of black and white. Look at this (laughs) audience. Look at the audience when you... The audience is very fun. Whenever you see these audience now that we're wrestling in daylight, uh, yeah, they work so well, and it's just cartoon squiggles. Power bomb. You could almost hear it. Tombstone. <laughs> you could almost hear it, and then and then the um, 
just no respect for your opponent kind That's of That's exactly pen. what it is. <laughs> yeah. And you see her really mad afterwards. Don't wrestle family. Never again. Got it? Because she's hard on her in that match. <laughs> she's being carried in afterwards. Yeah, she gave it to her the hard way. This is the blurring of the lines of the kayfabe, right? Because in theory, she's fine. But, uh, you know, Jaime's selling it. Gina's become sort of uh, disillusioned and discouraged from all of this. It's not, it's not working out exactly how she had planned. As I said, when they were kids, you know, she had dreams of them being these tag team champions, these superheroes, and uh, it just hasn't come to pass until now. And this is what her partner, her friend, is coming to tell her in person. We've got a tag team match, and it's against the champions. This is fantastic. You talk about Mula at the end of her, uh, at the end of her life. So, so here's the, the champions, like in, in modern day context of this story. Here's the champions when they were most vital. The Birmingham Lady Bashers. Yeah. They are known for being ruthless and violent, and you can kind of see it in their faces there in the in the in the contemporary versions of them. I love this hair, by the way. Like that hair is a ridiculous hairstyle. That, that's 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 Kirby Invisible Woman hair, man. And uh just a lot of whiskey and cigarettes, man. What's the dude version of a ring rat? Uh, because whatever it is, Ben, they chewed up and spit out a, a bunch of them. I like this announcer, too. It's like off camera. He's holding the microphone out like, uh, yeah, just you're talking to the mic. Yeah, man. That's, good. <laughs> That's because all that whiskey is on their breath. But I just love the universe he's, he's creating because these, these other images, man, they're a, part, they're a part of the story. So this is them when they were like youthful noobs, and now they're the grizzled vets. I was impressed by the belts. Oh, yeah. And, like the side view of the belt is so believable to me. That how many can draw? He can draw. They're super nice behind the stage, behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. They're so excited, inspirational. They're so nice. You get in the ring, choking choking out Sochi and banging Gina with a chair. You know, in real time, I'm trying to see if this is the part where they, they do it or not. I'm not sure if it is. I don't think so. But, like, there is back backroom stuff where it's like, oh, should, should we go introduce ourselves to them? Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's here because I'm not seeing it real quick, like I said, in real time. But that is that is a real thing. Like, my you know, my, my kid brother has been in, involved in the game since he was 17. And, like, if you don't introduce yourself to the vets, uh, it's taken as a giant sign of disrespect. And they will throw potatoes at you right. when uh, you go to the ring if they feel the least bit disrespected by you so it's like you have to like say hi to every single person or else you're you're toes you and i whenever we we went to uh some stuff if you remember like uh they they knew that that uh my my brother was my brother and you remember there were those guys that they were coming up introducing themselves and shit to us it's just like that's just part right. of the game i just uh i listened to Aaron anderson's podcast and he has started doing this long form story from the very beginning days of wrestling. And he's only gotten into about three months into his career, but he has those stories of showing up at, you know, a new locker room, um, sitting out of the way until, you know, the, the promoter has time to come and talk to him. Just all that like etiquette yes. and, and how to conduct yourself in those settings. Another one of these great pinups um, from Columbus, Ohio. It's like territory based, you man. know, number 58 in the series of wrestling legends. Oh, man. I could read 500 issues of this. Hilarious. Totally looks like a frickin' Vern Gagne or something. <laughs> it's Could the guy be more opposite than Jaime in real life, but uh, asking for, for letters to be sent in, and, and <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> so, so Jimmy, his cartoonist this, persona. It's, yeah, it's his, it's, his, it's his after mag persona. There you go. Uh, Three-issue series, 20 pages apiece, a lot of story being told in these pages that are no more than six panels tops and a lot of four panel pages uh when we see the grow up of uh of uh, Gina and I'll call her XO uh there's so much that happens kind of between the panels and and uh just some really smart storytelling decisions 
Yeah, this is this is really great. I love seeing like the kid art. Before I turn the page, I want to point out Criminal Records here. Oh yeah, Big still supporters. in business, still in business. Comic book store in Atlanta. I had the pleasure of going there. Geez, like two years ago, uh, I, I happened to pass through Atlanta and got to go check it out. And they have some cool memorabilia from like signings in the '90s. Um, but a, but a good comic shop and love the idea that they're still around and, yeah, and uh, doing well. Glad you brought that up, man. Big supporters of the hip hop comics and stuff. And, uh, and you can find them online. People that are interested in comic shop cultures. So this is this is like some of the stuff I'm talking about. So we've seen little Gina, and she's still little right here. goes goes off and moves, and then when she comes back to town, she hit her growth spurt. You know, like, how would that be handled in a fucking Marvel comic, right? Yeah, and well handled here to express, like, wow. Because even the announcers and the behind-the-scenes stuff, they talk about how, like, Gina's the superstar. Amazonian. She's the one that they that they recognize, like, she could really draw some money. And uh, and everybody kind of, resp you know, recognizes that because it's so physical, you know? So, pretty cool to see that. And the way he builds her figure, like, it's, it's not, you know, it's not... It's not TNA. Like she's a brawny chick, but you, you, you could just tell she's she's built well. She's got muscle in, in there. Lying about her age, by the way. She's only fifteen here, but uh, Vicky wants to get her in there right away. Spike Pow Driver. Oh yeah, man. Illegal in most territories, and it looks like her head's a little bit low there. Yeah, go ask. Uh, I'm, I'm worried about her on this go, on this panel. Go ask about Owen Hart about that man. But you know what? These ladies are vets. They're taking care of her. Hopefully. That's a big ass, man. That, that ass is going <laughs> to absorb that impact. There you go. Hey, you know how we say you want to have some speed on your car, get the wheels off the ground? That's what we have here, you know? Like, you want to create impact, impending impact, kinetic energy on the page? Everybody's in the air in that image. Awesome. Great. And I like uh, I like Sochi in the background is, is working it as a tag team partner gimmick, you know? You got to, you got to, that's the role you're playing. You're on the outside and you're worried about your partner. Man, these two, like, these series where you'll see, like, two big panels on a page are always dynamite. Yeah, man. Just dead on the canvas. She's and then, out. And then she powders out, dude, <laughs> to, to like, nurse that neck. How about this? Lifts her up. Lifts her off the... This is what's happening here, man. She picked her up to stop the referee's Could have been count. a three count. <laughs> Could have been a three count, but she picked that shit up, man, because they got to choke her out and disrespect her some more. Just brutal. This is, like, the uh, the Heart Foundation move oh right, right double right. team that was right when i started watching that's a good 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 move for that pink tights or blue pink yeah good yeah they basically are just stretching them and torturing them and the uh the birmingham slammers are uh remain champions not not a hard test i again i'm so impressed with the side view of the belts sure. it, that's a hard thing to draw and he makes it look easy and perfect and there's your referee in the short sleeves you know another uh variation like keep everything interesting they're all characters i bet you i make it tell you stories about these different referees so their big tag team dreams have been uh kind of squashed a little bit not 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 what gina at least was hoping for didn't get much of a payday, man. So they're back in their civilian lives, you know, like uh, XO. She, she's just, she's a, sta she's a mom, man. She's serving her family. Gina's a kid. She's in school. I really like how unglamorous this version of wrestling is depicted. It feels like regional wrestling. Sure. And, and you know, women's wrestling traditionally is not your big draw. So you're probably not going to be uh, living large. It you was, know. it was well done in, in 1996 too, man. Like even as a, as a kid, my favorite stuff was the novelty wrestling. And, and at, that's how the women were handled in like the eighties and stuff. Wendy, Wendy Richter beating the shit out of the spider woman. Like that was some, some fly shit. This is a fun sequence. Maggie comes and visits her aunt. I can't remember her reason for visiting, but it doesn't matter. It gives the aunt a, an opportunity to talk about how she had dreamed of Maggie getting in the business. And she goes through her lineage and you kind of get like when old school wrestlers talk about their profession and, you know, maybe if they're not happy with the current state, you see how much it means to Vicky. Like it's not even just her career. It's her, her parents before her. Uh, you know, there's a real legacy there that she feels a part of. It's really hard to, to get in. And there's so much attrition from noobs, it's certainly in the territory days. Uh, it wasn't inviting. You're going to get your arm broken. You're going to get your jaw broken the first time you go in on purpose. And if you come back, you know, it's Pai Mei and fucking Beatrix Kiddo type shit. You come back, after you heal up, you get let in on the secrets a little bit. But once again, Jim Cornette, he talks about there are guys 
uh, some of the announcers and stuff like that, the color, the color dudes who would have worked as like weathermen for, you know, the local, you know, <laughs> network news, they weren't smartened up. Yeah. Like it was, it was very protected uh, to keep the illusion going. Maggie fantasizing about what her wrestling career might have been like. <laughs> very idealized. <laughs> Although that's a pretty fun character with the teeth coming after. For sure. <laughs> and realizes that, yeah, that wouldn't have, uh, she wouldn't have been great at this. Stick to being a pro solar mechanic. So here's the storyline that we're seeing with these wrestling promoters. Um, one of their Texas women's champions, I think she's gotten pregnant. And yeah. so she's going away and vacating the title. And what are we going to do with it? We're going to put it on so. In the, uh, and, and they just put it on her. So like, there, uh, there would be a thing that they would do. I think, I think Buddy Rogers was the guy in a triple WF, where uh, a thing happens. Maybe it's like Stan Stacy yeah, broke his neck, something like that. And what they would do uh, in the pre-internet days is just say that he won the belt in the Caribbean, right? You know, it's like it's some place where you know you definitely are not going to be, yeah, absolutely, witness and shit. And uh, you know, you, you you never miss a show. That's exactly right, and Gina's so happy for her friend. That's bigger than anything in the world, the Texas title. And and look, man, it's her graduation, and yeah. she's more excited about her getting a chance to get the Texas belt. And I think that speaks to Gina's wrestling potential. Like she loves this stuff totally. And and uh, it's it's there's that great context stuff, man, because there's the one lady who who's going to get the belt put on her or something, and she's like, I'm so much bigger than Texas. Like fuck Texas, but Gina's like still like Texas. Holy shit. Yeah, that's a that's a good uh, observation on human nature, you know, perspective and where you've been, where you're going. It makes a difference of how you perceive those things. And uh, and Maggie delivers the belt. You know, it's this not exactly a ceremony, but a big deal. You know, she says that her aunt told her to protect it with her life. What is it? And uh, so excited putting it on over a nightgown. <laughs> and here we go. The Women's Texas Championship. So title defense this is what's coming up it's a big wrestling card and that's why they needed to get a champion together for this she looks like a mix of both adrian adonis is a here. lot of adrian adonis both of them the flamboyant guy and the uh, uh the east Wo the east west connection guy yeah this is definitely the the adrian adonis i knew from wrestlemania 3 coming into the ring here <laughs> but that black leather man like that's yeah. that's uh that's that's the older adrian adonis fair enough it's a good look though and again with the heel expressions on her mouth Little pompadour on the, the top of that hair, yelling at the yelling out at the crowd, getting her boos and hisses from the crowd, and being oblivious, like yes, 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 my people. <laughs> it's so good, man. Playing up arrogance, yelling at the referee, slapping the the baby face. That one, that one piece, man. <laughs> so good, man, and ripping off the jacket as the bell rings, holding back the the baby face who's pissed off now that she's been slapped. This is great stuff. Gina going heel, man, pull, pulling <laughs> yes, those moves while yes. the ref is distracted. <laughs> By the way, this is the, I think our fourth referee outfit. Now we have the gray pants on. Little attention to detail, man. It's the, the little little bits of detail. Grinding those knucks into the jibs. Yeah, pulling, gonna pulling make, hair. Gonna make that pretty girl not pretty after this. Yeah, definitely heel tactics. Oh, starting to come back. <laughs> Staying alive. There's so much wrestling that happens in these two. Yeah. You know, in addition to like the character stuff and the subplots and the behind the scenes stuff, like there's half the book is in the ring action. Number 60 in that pro wrestling series. Jum I can't wait for that wrestling book. Jum I hope it's all this stuff's in there. Jumbo Nishimura. Like that sounds like a fucking wrestler. It does. It he's, does. he's so good, man. That's a pretty great splash page with your inset panel and, and pulling her over the ropes. This was a move I used to see all the time whenever the heel would be coming back in and, and the baby face would do some move to yank them over the ropes look to get them in the hard way. Look at Gina's concern. Yeah, things are going wrong. Oh, oh drop boy. Kick. Not a good thing. The tables have turned. Suplexes, body slams, figure four leg locks, and rolling her up for the pin. Amazing figure drawing. Gina's coming in the ring, but a moment too late. And we've got our new Texas women's champion and crowned at this big wrestling event. And these guys realize what happened there. That was a setup. Yeah, man. A screw job of sorts. 
Never got to defend the belt successfully. Yeah, so if something like that happens, man. You, that must lose you some stock in the territory. Yeah, she they did not keep uh, did not keep so strong. So she leaves and she's all angry and ends up in the uh, I guess the babyface locker room, picking a fight and uh, not happy with how this turned out. <laughs> Funny to have a wrestling comic, and then whenever they get into a real fight behind the scenes, you're getting the cartoon stars and fight cloud. Right. <laughs> and uh, eating a little humble pie for Gina, man. She's sent on her way, very unsuccessful in her attempt to regain some face. Apparently, this left Vicky unhappy, too, with the whole thing, recognizing this was a setup and really, uh, really throws so under the bus from every every position leaving her very weakened afterwards and she's so disgusted she sells her wrestling puts her wrestling camp up for sale the business has changed right yeah yeah well, we didn't com comment on it much but that little room with the other bookers and stuff was it's how you imagine it just a couple of guys you see them with their pencils by the way uh doing their talking and you know you got to come to a consensus in the nwa about who's going to get to hold the belt yeah, all the little subtle details are really interesting to me. How much he gets right and how much of it is like, read it and reread it and look at the back, you know, watch everything. Yeah. Because there's a lot of this great payoff in there. Um, I wonder about like the camp being for sale. This is, you know, 96. If there's some commentary there uh, on Jaime on the wrestling business. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, how much has it changed at that point? You know, that's Monday Night Wars are starting starting up at that point. You know, there's regional wrestling is just essentially over it's been it's been gone for 20 years at that point uh well you know a good 15 years we'll, we'll say heck of a kind of gorilla monsoon gordon Sully kind of dude with those like prom outfits that you would see gorilla wear and stuff like what like what is that gorilla monsoon was the commentator when i started watching and uh then i have that image just it's it's perfect i i saw him in a lot of those outfits and uh vicky showing up you know for this big women's battle royal so that's pretty fun you put put the wrestler on commentary and it's a good use of the character keep her keep her present and again you get to see all of these characters that jaime comes up with for this cast and they look so different from each other I mean, this is superhero comic storytelling. Yeah. Look at the schmas, man. <laughs> so fun. And the girls, man, our girls are uh, are, are knocking a snot out of each yeah, other. Yeah, they really are going at each other. That's what you hear on podcasts, too, is, you know, the, these guys who are friends are the ones who can work the best together. Yeah. People being eliminated, great backbreaker. All of this stuff is very believable. <laughs> it's incredible to me that he's able to choreograph such a thing in a comic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is an authentic comic. Like, he, he, he's into this shit. And the big payoff, the two friends are the last two in the ring. What are they going to do? Who's going to win this? They walk out together. All oh, they're millennials. <laughs> <laughs> all the generations ears you know they all got they got their participation trophy whoa nelly indeed and you see a kind of smug uh vicky you know two 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 friends who have kind of figured out a way to navigate through this this corrupt wrestling business and keep that friendship intact jimmy here here's here's how well they navigated it because this is the last page of the comic gina and xo like they become heel tag team champions, dude. They become what they wanted to become. That is awesome. We just don't read that part. That's the Cenas. You, you see it. That is cool. It's them. I never realized that, Ed. You've like completed this. You, you've elevated Whoa Nelly one notch higher for me. It's, just that, it's like a 17 now on my 10 scale. It's, a, it's just one of those great grace notes. The things that the, the bros can do. Pro Wrestling Legend Series, 1062. Yeah. I hope that wrestling book has 1,100 pages. <laughs> There's a lot that happens, man. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh. What a great comic. What a great wrestling comic. You know, we talk about wrestling a lot on this show as it relates to storytelling, and, like, you see it demonstrated in this series. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there isn't a close second to this. Uh, very inspiring stuff. Yeah, I love it. What do you say? Good to go? Wrap it up. Okay, Fabers. Like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? 
Join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download my wrestling zine along with some of my other out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can see a lot of my original art. You can see how I make comics. You can hear me talk more about wrestling and comics connection. Patreon.com slash jimrug. You can't disable the power of the label. Fantagraphics Books, publisher of Nelly, is the publisher of my uh, new comic series, Red Room. Uh, just out in stores now. Get it while you can. These things are flying off the shelves, going super quick. Every issue completely self-contained. So if you uh, are slow on a trigger and you miss out on issue one, pick up the next issues because you're going to get a complete experience. It's going to it's going to uh, be worth your comics buying dollar, and uh, it's going to be coming out on a monthly basis. So get it put on your pull list at your local comic shop. If you don't have a shop in town, hit up the link tree in the description below. Go to the Fantagraphics website. Put in your orders and pre-orders for Red Room Comics. Uh, if you want to read them ahead of time, you could support my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. There's a link there too. Well over 100 pages are up right now. Three bucks gets the complete archive. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on and coming out in 2021. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jim, I'm super stoked to get back to the drawing board, man. Reading comics like this really energizes me uh, for, w with you know love for this medium. Give these guys some merch in order so we could be on our way. Read more comics. <laughs>